the day. And I want to take some more calls on the Savage Nation. KSFO, San Francisco, Arden, you want to talk? You're being heard on the Savage Nation. Hello, Michael. Um, concerning the Pope um, and all the people who are following after him, um, I and many people that I know believe that the Pope is the false prophet. And the Bible definitely says that all the world will follow after him. That is why we see so many people just flooding. I mean, it's just it's amazing to me to see this happening. All the world is following after him, and there will be more. And that is why he has a direct attack on Christians, and it fails to to recognize. Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think he's attacking Christians. He is attacking the Western value system, as far as I can see. In fact, I'm not alone. All of the African bishops think that he's attacking Western values with his liberalism. Has he said one word that is conservative Christian teaching? That is of any conservative Christian teaching in anything he said? Not at all. But I think that the the very fact that he said that um, the, the people that attacked 9/11 were we're doing it in the name of God, he's definitely throwing arrows at Christians, and, you know, we've got enough of that going on already, and that's just happening even Well, more. I heard that speech. I don't think the Pope said it, to be fair. It was a, a reform rabbi who made my flesh crawl with his uh, sanctimonious Hebrew prayer for the dead. It made me very angry when he said that there were those who attacked us on 9-11 in the name of God. No, it wasn't the name of God. It was the name of Allah. Nobody said Muslims attacked us. They stood on that hallowed ground, and they disgraced it as far as I'm concerned. And I want to know what this meddler had to do with 9-11. With what was he doing there? What was he doing there? He had every opportunity at that moment to talk against the dangers of radical Islam, to stop young people from converting to that breed of Islam. He didn't do it, did he? Instead, he gave another homily about peace on earth, goodwill to man. He's not Santa Claus. He's not Kris Kringle. Stay on the line. I'm sending you government zero. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You heard me. It is the uh, Savage Nation, and uh, I think the newsletter, Savage the Catholic, Save Us from This Pope's Communist Agenda, it says it all. I, I can't mince words. I don't have the capacity for it. I study politics long enough to know what he's saying. I mean, if I look at what he's saying and match it with Karl Marx, it's sort of a puzzle that matches. The pieces go together. And I've exposed the Pope's hidden agenda on pages 192 to 219 of Government Zero. And frankly, i got to tell you something just happened. I had Art Moore of World Net Daily change the headline on my book ad on michaelsavage.com. And I said, put up Savage Exposes Pope's Hidden Agenda in the book uh, on pages 192 to 219. The book has now jumped to number two on Amazon in politics. This is a month before publication. It's already number two. I think people are, are anxious to learn for themselves what the heck is going on and what's the connection between Obama and the Pope. KSFO, David, fire away. Your opinion counts. In AD 70, when the Romans sacked the temple in Jerusalem, they took the treasures and antiquities back to Rome, maybe even the Ark of the Covenants, and eventually those had to end up in the Vatican. So John Kerry has failed to make a deal between Palestinians and the Jews. The Pope has a bargaining chip, and he's over here talking to Obama. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the bargaining ship? Do you think that the Pope's going to pressure Israel to give up Judea and Samaria to create a Palestinian state that will try to destroy them? Yes, and if he has the Ark of the Covenant and some of the antiquities from the temple to offer them so that they can get the temple reopened, that's a huge... Holy God. Well, you see, you're a knowledgeable biblical scholar. I, there are things I know nothing about, and this is an area I know nothing about. That's amazing. These are the hidden, the hidden little games being played. You actually think that the Vatican is going to offer up those, those artifacts to have the, the Jewish state commit suicide? Possibly. The Jewish state wants that temple reopened. And mm. Obama wants a deal 
with the Palestinians and the Jews. And the Pope. Well, that's that sounds good on paper, doesn't it? That sounds good on paper to give the Palestinians a nation, but uh, I don't think that they're going to want to live in harmony with the Jews. Do you? No, 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 no. In fact, that's why none of the other nations want Palestinians living amongst them. But I don't want to get into that issue right now. But you know, I forgot. That's one of the. Um, what do they call that when you go around a house after it's been renovated? A checkpoint, bullet points, uh, punch list, a punch list. Obama could punch off everything on his list because of John Boehner. Except one thing, there's no Palestinian state. Because of that nasty, thick-necked Jew called uh, um, Netanyahu. That one thick-necked Jew stands in his way of annihilating the Jewish state forever. And that one thick-necked Russian stands in the way of rolling over Russia and turning it into a vassal state of, of Brussels. And that man's name is Putin. So he's not finished yet. He's got quite a bit of time left. This great new Messiah who's arisen, the Messiah of the left, who has now brought his Pope here for all of us to listen to. My friend, stay in a line. Government Zero has information in it. I don't have that in it. I wish I had that in it, but I don't, because I didn't know that. WBAP, Robbie, welcome to the program. Fire away what's on your mind. Hi, Dr. Savage. First, I want to say I really appreciate you getting your third hour up here because it's my drive time and I needed that. My, uh, well, my I'm, I'm glad to be in Dallas on BAP in the third hour. It gives me a lot of spirit. So what's on your mind tonight? Uh, I wanted to talk to you about your uh, being a spiritual man because I'm the same way. I'm, I'm a very spiritual man, and I pretty much eschew organized religion like you do because I can't stand the hypocrisy. I can't stand the greed. But I just want to say that... <laughs> well, I'm sorry. well, you know, look, you're touching a raw nerve with me right now. Because if ever I thought about it... In, no, let me put it this way. It's come up, flaring up in my nostrils more today in the last two days than ever in my life about the hypocrisy and pomposity and phoniness of organized religion. I've never seen anything like it. It's agitating me. But I haven't given up my faith in God, I'll tell you that. Of course not. And, and I don't... The house of God is with me wherever I go. I don't have to go to a building on the corner on Sunday with a steeple and a bell, you know. Well, that's how I. That's how I. I have tried houses of worship. Some of them are beautiful places and sanctuaries to go into, and if people find solace in there, be underneath the stained glass. Okay, I'm all for it, but I don't know. I God seems to be in the seagull that's diving into the bay as I watch him dive, or I watch a turn drop from the sky and catch a fish. I say to myself, there's God's hand right in front of my eyes. I watch it. I see it through nature. Does that make me a pantheist? No. Am I a worshiper of Gaia? No. But I see God's hand in everything, and I don't need to be in a temple to see it. Anyway, we'll take more calls when I come back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Rock and Roll Friday on the Savage Nation. I don't really feel like rock and roll today. Kind of a day of, uh, almost a day of infamy to me. I don't know. The hypocrisy, the sanctimony, it's getting to me. It's not just the politics. It's the pomp and circumstance of the church and the synagogue and the Buddhist temple all on display today. I looked at them as they gave their benedictions on the ground, 9-11 ground today, and I said, oh, my God. These are all the people in college that I, I just couldn't deal with. I didn't like any of them. All the kids who couldn't make it in anything else, they went into religion. And that's a thought that entered my mind. What can I tell you? It's just I'm a cynical person. I have to tell you that. Maybe I'm a realist. But uh, I don't know. The Buddhists and the Hindus and the chanting and the Sanskrit and the Hebrew and the this and the Latin homilies and ground 9-11. Everybody wanted a 15 minutes of fame. That's all. 15 minutes of fame, a selfie with the Pope. 15 years after the Muslims attacked us on 9-11-2001, 15 years later, all of the religious figures decided to go there and, uh, and give us a little blessing of the deceased. I, I don't know the whole thing. So you're going to say, well, okay, is this going to be good for God or bad for God? Well, you're going to get a lot more attendance now in the churches. The mass hysteria is going to produce more attendance in the churches, that's for sure. The question is, will the church continue to espouse Marxism? Now that the Pope is a naked Marxist, that you look at his social policies, there's no differential between what he's saying and that of Das Kapital. I've, das Kapital. I've studied it, I've studied it, I've studied it, I've studied it. I don't care whether you read it in the New York newspaper. 
You know, it's like one newspaper, one, one uh, chapter and verse, chapter and verse. Marx Francis, Marx Francis, Marx Francis. The only thing Karl Marx didn't have down was the environment. It wasn't an issue yet in his time. So when have you last seen God or talked to God? Do you know God? Where is God? I was thinking about that myself because I, I go on, you know, up and down with that. I, you know, I, have a, I have the same relationship with God that Mother Teresa had personally. She herself said, and you read her, she was a great woman, a real saint. She said that sometimes she sees God and lives with God, and sometimes she doesn't even know if he exists. I feel the same way. I know uh, about a year and a half ago, I, something happened to me. I wound up in a hospital with a neurological problem. I never, ever talked about it on the radio. I'm not going to do it now. I'm not Glenn Beck. And I thought I was finished. I went in that hospital, and I prayed to God again. And something happened to me, and the neurologist told me a few days later that what happened to me he said, I've seen it happen to people in 1978, and they're still crippled from it. I healed in two days, three days. He said, it's a miracle. He said, I, what did you do? I, I didn't follow his medication advice. I did for a day, and then threw the pills in the garbage. I used nutrition, and I used a lot, I used a lot of prayer, and I told God, I, my work's not finished. It's that simple. Please don't take me away from my work. And I know it was God who did it to me because I know the, the organs that were affected were directly related to what I'm using right now to speak with you. You, you don't know anything about this because I don't play on your sympathies. I don't, I don't play on your heartstrings with all these fake illnesses that you get from radio these days. Every other day, another one of them is going down with a major illness. The next thing you know, they're back again. Dying, this and that. Two days later, they're back peddling something else. A vitamin or this. I never saw anything like this. So where is God? Does he exist? I, you know, something else about this God question occurred to me, and it's not really controversial. Every time a man is making love to his wife, when he reaches a climax, he says, what does he say? He says, oh, God! That's why women are so arrogant, because they figure they're God. Why do you think women think that they're so important? Well, a man screams out, oh, God, what is she going to think? She says, yeah, finally recognized who I am. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. It is funny in its own way, but it's true. What does a man scream out but, oh, God? Who's he talking to anyway? Anyway, just thought I would lighten the load a little bit with a little humor. Humor is a God-given gift that God gave me since I'm a child to handle some of the crap that I've had to deal with my whole life. And I don't want to go into that one, but believe me, I learned how to be funny when it was not very funny to be me. And that's how I learned to be funny. It was to entertain a woman who was crying all the time in front of me because of what happened to her son, the other son. I had to entertain my poor mother, so I learned how to entertain her with making faces and telling jokes, and I would do, you would, the craziest things you could ever imagine is my poor sad mother was crying in that apartment. A uh, little old entertainer me, that's how I learned. I learned how to entertain her because she was sad, and I would make her smile and laugh, and the tears would go away, and I would feel better. I, I honest to God, that's how I learned uh, all of that. Now, yesterday was a birthday, I never told you any of that stuff. But it just uh, came back up to me now. I know, just thinking about it all. And this is how you learn things. She taught me how to dance. She taught me how to tie my shoe, lace, brush my teeth. That's what mothers do. God bless the mothers. God bless the mothers. They're the only thing that can save us. They're the only thing that can save us. God bless the mothers. So on that somber note, God, do you want me to talk about politics? John Boehner, you want me to talk about him? What's there to say about him? You know what's going to happen in the month that remains. You know. You know what's going to happen. He's going to screw us like you've never seen before for the final, the balloon payment of his career. And you'll never see the balloon payment coming because he doesn't want to go to prison. So I can guarantee you'll never see the balloon payment. But you know and I know what he's going to do. He'll try to complete his task for Obama and the New World Order. He'll try to make certain that we have amnesty for the illegals. He'll try to make certain that uh, whatever it is that the master in the White House, the puppet master wants, is gonna, he's going to get. God save us from John Boehner. Just remember this this weekend. God, I wrote this last weekend when the Pope was coming, remember? God is not affected by man. Man is affected by God. And so I said, have faith in God, not man. I thought that's one of the most logical couplets I've ever written. It's actually logically perfect. It's mathematically perfect. In fact, if you translate it,